have my special guest with me today. My dad. Isn't he fun? He's not really this short. He's just sitting down because he's not used to being in the kitchen for hours and hours. See, he's, he's a tall guy. Uh, let me just get the recipe group on here. If you don't know, this is my dad. He is a math and science teacher. Now he is a substitute chemistry teacher. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he is a substitute teacher, so he's a really smart guy. I use him a lot. I'm like, hey, Dad, uh, math, help me. And then he's like, here you go. That comes, off on, comes up a lot. It does. It does. I'm like, yeah. what is what is this plus this? I don't know what this is. All right, let me get the recipe page here. And he actually inspired me to make, like, pumpkin pie and that kind of stuff. He was my seasoning guy. I'd be like, Dad, what seasoning does this need? It needs something. And he'd be like, oh, it needs this. Tammy and Cindy, hello. Tammy's from Vermont. She says happy Father's Day. Oh, thank you. It's a little early. I love it. It's so fun. All right. So we have our recipe group up here. We are going to dig in. So I bribed him into cooking with me. I'm like, okay, we'll cook your favorite things. Mm. So I'm like, ooh, we're going to cook Reuben dip. He was my inspiration for the first Reuben recipe in here. I think it was in volume three or four. And I'm like, I got to make something Reuben for my dad. And I did. It was good. I've never even had Reuben's before cutting out sugar and flour. So now when we had Reuben's, I'm like, what have I been missing my whole life? But nothing, because I can still have it now, which is so fun. And then he inspired me again. I'm like, we got to make something more Reuben. Now, I don't know why I'm not seeing all the comments. Oh, here we go. Uh, Maureen, she says, happy Father's Day. Hello, Maureen. Uh, Lois, hello from New York State. Happy wow. Father's Day. Uh, Deb, happy Father's Day, Mr. All. Greetings from the Smoky Mountains. Ooh, so fun. Wow. Yes, it's so my dad worked at a Christian school, and us kids were homeschooled all through. We had our choice. We were homeschooled all through high school, and we had our choice if we wanted to go to school. So I think each of us did like a week where we went out to the school there, and it was the weirdest thing having to call him Mr. All. We couldn't just be like, hey, dad. We had to call him Mr. All. That was weird. Was it weird having us call you Mr. All? It was weird. It was weird. But we all kind of made the choice to then. We liked being homeschooled. And then he would come home and help us with math things if we needed it. Uh, Instagram, happy Father's Day from Cape Canaveral, Florida. Wow. From Cape Canaveral. Cape yes. Thank you. See, he's, he's a map guy. He likes to Google Maps things, too. So he knows where you're all from. Yeah, now. Man. I still don't know why it's not. Let me try opening this again. And then we will dig into our recipes. But it just does not want to show me the comments. And that's not good. Because I like to chat with you guys. Okay. Uh, Tracy, is that Tom All from Elbow Lake? <laughs> it sure is. Uh, sweetie, hello, Natalie and Mr. All. So nice to have you joining us today. Thank you. It is. It's so fun. Uh, Janice, hi Natalie, nice to have your dad with you today. Happy Father's Day. I agree. It's so fun having him here. All right, so we're going to dig in. He's never used a scale before, so this will be fun. But I just told him he was a little nervous, and I'm like, just do what I tell you. So you're going to stand on your head, okay. use your toes. No, so we're going to get our bowls because we're going to mix our Reuben dip first. So you're going to place your bowl on your scale, then you're going to push this button, which is on. Uh, Megan, hello from Toronto. Happy Father's Day, Mr. All. Thank you. Uh, Cindy, Toronto. dad are awesome. Yes, they are. I kind of like dads. They're pretty cool. All right, so now we have our scales at zero. Uh, I could not find corned beef or roast beef deli meat, mm. which you can do roast beef deli meat at the store. So instead, I got ham, which I think that'll be, it might even be tastier because of a little bit of saltiness from the ham. It might be good. So I got ham deli meat. But it'll still be tasty. Meat is meat, right? So I have my little oven on here at 400 degrees. And now we're going to cut our meat into small pieces. Let me grab some of this. Trust me, you can just cut our meat on top of that. Or you can just rip it up. So uh, when you're looking for meat, make sure sugar is not in the first three ingredients. This one I found, uh, sugar is pretty far down, and it's not much. I got this at... I think it was 
as my local Aldi's, but I think they have it at Walmart also. It is the Castlewood uncured ham. If you get it with honey smoked ham or the other kind of hams, they always add things. So I just got the uncured Virginia brand smoked ham, which is pretty good. I like to get it no nitrates as much as I can. And then they play the game. How do you open this thing? When in doubt, get a knife. No nitrates. Or ask your dad for a pocket knife. I've done that before. Oh. All right. We are going to do, let's see how much, one ounce of meat. So you can either cut it or just rip it up to your, into your bowl. I'm just going to rip it up. That sounds good. I'm just going to take one. You get to get nice and messy. We're going to do one ounce. So just kind of keep putting it in until this one. Oh, wow. Pretty close. And I mean, yours doesn't have to be perfectly measured, so if you want to do a little bit more meat, you sure can. He isn't eating strictly uh, weighed meals. He just kind of eats on the edges with us. He, he'll eat whatever we cook him. <laughs> edge of the camp. Edge of the camp, but he still eats pretty healthy, which is awesome. Uh, sweetie, Natalie, please go easy on your dad. My dad didn't know his way in the kitchen either. Aw, <laughs> I will. He is a good cook. I think, didn't you work as a chef somewhere? Not a chef. Or like a cook. cook. A fry cook. A fry cook. He's a good cook. He taught me how to like make eggs and all this I, kind of stuff. I got a tip from the garbage man one time. Ten cents for the French toast. Hey. hey. That must have been some good French toast. Do you want to wipe your fingers off? So you can rip yours up into little oh. pieces into your bowl. No, that's okay. And then... We're going to add our ricotta cheese. So this is a dip. It's not, you could make this like a Reuben bowl. You could add either some coleslaw mix into this. You could saute it first, or you could do some shredded cabbage, which is pretty much coleslaw mix, just not shredded. What's ricotta? Ricotta is, uh, it's like a thick, it's kind of like, it reminds me of cottage cheese, but not as like chunky. And these things, so they make the little tab things on these things, but they never open. I always rip the tab off, and I'm like, really? So when in doubt, you're, you're good with that knife. just use a knife. I better be good with a knife. All right, we are going to do how much ricotta? We're going to do one ounce of ricotta cheese also. Okay. So then you can push this button, and it'll zero your scale. Ooh, look at that. Nice. Isn't that fun? So we're going to do one ounce. Ooh, just a little bit more. There you go. Measuring. Measuring isn't, it's like science. It was always fun because uh, he would bring science experiments home from school and then do it with us kids at home because we were homeschooled. And then he would do like cool science experiments, blow things up. That was always my favorite part. I did really like science. Math, not so much, but science, I liked it. Exploding things. Uh, Marine, your dad is handsome. Oh, Aww. Don't tell my mom. No, I'm just kidding. Hey, now. Oh, she's right there. Uh, now we're going to put our Reuben dressing in here. So I have below here. This is from Volume 6 or Cooking with Joy 2, this recipe. So we're going to do our Reuben sauce now, which is one tablespoon of mayo. So I have a tablespoon here. Mayo, ayo. We just mix that right in there. Yeah. I got this. It's Primal Kitchen. It's a little bit spendy, but for mayo, it's pretty good. I did see a recipe to make your own mayo. It looked really easy. I'm going to have to try that sometime. So just one tablespoon of mayo. So this one you don't weigh. You could weigh it. It would be half an ounce or one tablespoon. Um, then we're going to do one teaspoon of lemon juice. Whoops, that's okay. You could just add a tish bit more. That's the adventure of cooking when you spill. Blingin'. Blingin' mayo. You could just leave it in the mayo thing if you want. Then we're going to do one teaspoon of lemon juice. So I'll give you this tisp. That's okay. I'll clean it up later. Not, I would never spill anything <laughs> on the cooking show. Ever, right? now. Uh, Deb, homemade mayo is easy. Need your stick blender. You love it. Yes, it looked really easy. It was just like an egg and olive oil and was it some salt? 
I think that was it. And then you just like did that hand blender and it, there you go, mayo right there. No added if, ands, or buts. Uh, now we're gonna do a half teaspoon of, okay. Worcestershire, 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 yep, this sauce. Worcestershire sauce, however you say it. I think you have to have an accent. Worcestershire sauce. We're going to do a half teaspoon, right? Yeah, a half teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. It's kind of fun to say. If anybody knows how to say it, you get an award. Um... We're going to do some horseradish sauce. Now that I know how to say. We're going to do one and a half teaspoon. So we'll just do the one teaspoon and then a half scoop of horseradish sauce just to give it a little spice. Oops, that's too much. All right, I'm going to do your one and then I need a half. I'm helping you out here. Thanks. There you go. <laughs> All right, what's next for our sauce? Uh, two ounces of relish. I don't have any relish, so what we're going to do is we're just going to dice some pickles up instead. Okay. How easy. So we're going to zero our scales. And I have a knife here. Here you go. This is what dads are for. Thank you, Dad. And we're going to just dice Smashing some bugs. pickles. Yeah. Oh, those bugs are nasty. We're just going to do little teeny dices of pickles. You can even dice them as small as you want. Don't chop your fingers. If I learned one thing, my dad would tell me, just don't cut yourself. All right, so you're going to zero your scale, and you can take some of this. We're going to do two ounces. And pickles are two ounces free, so you can take some of these little bits and put that in your bowl till it gets to two ounces. I won't chop you. You can grab those if you want. I promise I won't. Perfect. Keep it coming. Yeah. Two ounces is usually about two pickles, depending on how big your pickle is. I always weigh mine. I always like those little baby dill pickles. Those were so tasty. Now for my two ounces of pickles, throw these in. That's the 1.3. Oh, two ounces. Oops, a little bit. But, oh, right. Perfect. You still stayed at two ounces. It did. What? I had a napkin here. Sometimes you can do just like a tish bit more and it'll still stay at the same weight. So we have our all of our sauce in here. Now we're going to mix this up. Mm. I have a fork, so you could just mix it with a fork. I like to take it off the scale because I don't want to wreck the scale. Do you do that when you do science experiments, too? You take things off the scale if you're going to mix it. Mm. Mortar and pestle. <laughs> Maybe this is where I get the experimentive side. Uh, hello to your dad on Instagram. Hi. This is so fun. <laughs> Uh, Janice, what kind of pickle? These, I think I actually got this at the dollar store. Otherwise, I have a brand that I like at Walmart. Um, I don't remember what it, I think it's something Garden. I've had to actually order it online because they run out. Because maybe I buy them all. This, they're kosher spears. Just look at the ingredients. Make sure sugar is not in the top five. I try to get them without color. This one actually has color because from the dollar store. So these aren't my favorite pickles, but these are pretty good. These are just kosher spears. Green number five. Green number five, pretty much. All right, now we are going to add the rest of our um, remaining ingredients on here. So we did our ricotta cheese. We're gonna top it with the Swiss cheese instead because then it'll be very like Swissy. So we're gonna add our two ounces of sauerkraut. Oh, no. Yeah, the good stuff. Or as the Germans say, sauerkraut. We gotta get that in there. Uh, Instagram, hello from the UK. Uh, oh. The England, I have to get up a little closer because it's very small. Let's see. Uh, oh, England versus Scotland Europe. Cup matches on, but I'd rather watch you. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. It's like 
like us in the Super Bowl. We beat the Europe the Cup. That is so fun. Thank you for joining. I hope you don't miss it. Maybe it'll, they'll have a replay. Uh, Natalie, does your dad eat a sugar and flour free diet? He's on the edge. So he'll have the boys. We have like these tortillas and they it's there's like three ingredients. So they're very healthy, but they don't have them very often. So he'll eat flour, but sugar. You're pretty much kick that one. A little honey. They yeah, they do a little honey, so two ounces. Two ounces. Yeah, so not strictly. They're kind of on the edges, but it's we don't have any like ice cream in our house. Mm -hmm. We don't have any like candy bars in our house. We got nice cream. Yeah, we have nice cream or the nice creams in my cookbooks. We make them that. Um, once in a while, like maybe for Christmas, I'll get him a dark chocolate bar. Something like that. That's like the 90%. He likes the really, really dark chocolate. Mm. But they're really on the edge. So they don't really eat too much. So then we're going to add a little bit of salt. Where is the salt? Here's the salt. Do I have my sound on? Oh, that's what it was. So just a pinch of salt. Pinch. Or just to taste. Oh, I guess they're saying we can't hear my dad. You have to talk. All right. Use your teacher voice. Teacher voice. Hey, you kids, <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> oh, boy, run away. Uh, Cheryl, hi from St. Thomas, Ontario, Canada. We have our Canadian friends here. So fun. All right, we have everything we need in our bowl. So I'm going to grab our little baking dishes here. I'm going to look all those places up in Google Map later. He likes to Google Map. All right, here are our little baking dishes. They're pretty small. These are the Grab It Corning Ware, uh, a 15 ounce. So it's about, what, four inches? Because they say your finger span is about six inches. I don't know. Six. Six. Seven. Seven. Something. We're going to use these. I have little spatulas, so we get every little bit of our oh, yummy dip. Uh, I am going to just lightly spray it because you never know. Just a little bit of olive oil. So here's yours. You can scoop your Reuben dip into there. Now you could fold in your Swiss cheese, but we're gonna put it on top because I want it nice and cheesy on top. And then you can dip vegetables in this or you could put this on top of like a salad if you want. That would be delicious. Um, I don't know if I've ever folded food. You've never folded food? No. Do you even fold your clothes? No. <laughs> That is hilarious. All right, then you can kind of just like smooch it around. Make sure it's nice and flat in there. Okay. I guess I'm going to need my scale again for our Swiss cheese. And we're going to use this pan to cut our cheese. Got to cut the cheese. Oh, <laughs> uh, I got this at my local Aldi's too. It's just a block of Swiss cheese, nothing special. You could get the slices of Swiss cheese. Usually one slice is about one ounce. I did buy this special uh, Chipotle cheese, and that was a little bit less than an ounce in each slice. Yeah, I found it at all these. So we're going to do one ounce of cheese. Swiss? Yeah. So you can either rip it up or just place the slices on top, whichever you want. Do I have to yodel when I put it on? Yes. Okay. Do you have your liter hosen? <laughs> My dad is very musically talented. He plays the recorder. He plays the violin. <laughs> he plays the bass. He's the bassist on our church band. We're going to do one ounce. One so, ounce? Yeah, you can either just place the slice on top or rip it up, whichever it up. you want to do. Do what you do. Rip it up. Hopefully this is one ounce. If it's not, I can cut more cheese. Mm. Rip it. We're almost there. Just a tish, one more. Here we go. Almost there. Almost there. There we go, one ounce. Oh, you need another little bit. All right. And then the best part, which really makes it taste like Reuben's, oh, is the yes. caraway seeds. This is like a spice or a seasoning. So I'm just going to add like a pinch. I'm going to put it in my hand first. You want to pinch out of there or do your own. Well, so just a little sprinkle of caraway seeds. 
Or if you don't have caraway seeds, you don't like caraway seeds, skip it. But you can. This adds just like, what does this, what, doesn't it taste like that? Pumpernickel? Pumpernickel. Pumpernickel bread. That's what it tastes like. And that's what they usually put Rubens on, is pumpernickel bread. Mm-hmm. The more you know. That's one thing we don't do in science. We don't put things back. <laughs> in science. Well, our hands are clean. So now I'm going to pop this in the oven. It's at 400. I'm going to pop this in for 15 minutes. Mm. And this is where it's going to get hot and melty and cheesy. Yum. All right, set the timer for 15. Now while that's cooking, we're going to make his next favorite thing, which is gingerbread. Oh. He likes gingerbread. He likes gingerbread cookies. What, tell him what it reminds you of. When I was little, my mother would uh, bake gingerbread cookies, gingerbread men, and she would wrap them, decorate them, and wrap them up in cellophane, hang them on the Christmas tree, and then we were not allowed to eat them until New Year's. Ooh. By that time, they were pretty rock hard, but dip them, dip them in milk, and they were delicious. That was just such a good memory. See, it's the memories that come with it. So we're going to make a sugar-free, free, flour-free version of that, mm. which it's pretty easy. I got on a little bit of a gingerbread kick. I had posted a gingerbread donut recipe, so when I was looking for recipes to make today, I almost picked that one. I'm like, wait, we already made that one. So this one is different. These are gingerbread waffles, but we're going to make them as donuts also. He's going to make them as donuts. I'm going to make them as waffles. Uh, Cindy, gingerbread is so good. Mm. It is. It really is. All right. I'm going to grab my waffle maker. This I got this at a thrift store. I like it because you can make four waffles at once. So this always fits one whole recipe in it at least. I'm going to move this over because we're going to need more room. So we can make our gingerbread. Then I found this donut maker at a thrift store also. I really like it. And this makes five donuts, which is pretty nice. Or you could use a donut pan. Can we make a donut this big? Yeah. Well, it's going to make it into five little oh, donuts. Okay. So it will be a big donut. You could make this in a mini loaf pan and bake this if you want to. Whichever you have. You can make this as much as. Bless you. Thank you. They're a little bit oily because I have used them. So you can make this as muffins. You can make this as cookies. You can make it in a waffle maker, donut maker, donut pan, whatever you have to make it in. It's not like specific that you have to, oh, we have to make it only in a donut maker. No, you can make it in other things also. So I'm going to turn these around. I'm going to leave them this way, actually. we got to make room so we can mix our things. Thank you. And I have an extension cord here. You're probably not supposed to plug these into extension cords, but the worst thing that can happen is it'll trip my uh, power strip over there. Oh no, this is a three prong, but that one's not. All right, we're gonna make this work. This one I just have to plug back here. That's okay, I'll just pour mine back here and you could do yours on the counter. No pressure, no, I'm just kidding. Well. Okay, we just have to get this a little set up and then we will start making our donuts, our gingerbread donuts. Uh, Instagram, love this live. It's Father's Day this Sunday in the UK. Oh my goodness, oh, it's Father's cool. Day in the US also this Sunday too. That is so fun. I never knew that they had that in the UK. I love that. That is so fun. Are you going to do anything special to celebrate your father if he's still around? Or if he is near you? Or if you might Zoom call him or something like that? So what things special are you going to do for your father this Father's Day? That's always so fun to hear. All right, we're going to need clean bowls because we can't use sauerkraut bowls for sweet things. Maybe. Maybe. Ooh, sauerkraut gingerbread. Ugh. No, no, no. So we're going to heat and lightly oil our waffle makers. It doesn't matter if you oil them before it's hot or after it's hot. So I'm going to do it right before we put our stuff in. So I have them on now. They're heating up. Uh, now we're going to add our banana to our bowl and to our scale. So we're going to zero our scale and we're going to do two ounces banana. Sometimes you got to push it again. Yeah. If you push it while it's like moving, sometimes it'll stop halfway. Uh, Tammy, we are going to the lake and having a cookout. Ooh, oh, that is a fun Father's Day thing. 
Oh my goodness, you got, ah, we both got exactly two ounces. Yeah. Oh, let's go to Vegas. Yeah. Uh, pray, oh, pray for my father in heaven. Oh, your father's in heaven. Well, he is having one of the best Father's Day. He's That's having right. a party up there. We've heard so many stories of people who have gone to heaven and then they come back and they're like, we didn't want to come back. It was so fabulous there. Yeah. Uh, his father is actually still alive. How old is grandpa? 98. 98. Oh my goodness. And he plays the, the... is it accordion or concertina? It's got the buttons. Oh, and accordion so or concertina. When I zoom him uh, once a week, I have him play for me and he'll play, uh, some old Ger German polkas and tunes and, and, uh, he's very good at it. Now, did he... Was he born in Germany and he came with his family, or did his family come over and then? His he was older born brothers here? and sisters were born in Germany. Or actually, they were Germans from Russia. Oh. Uh, they lived in Saratov near the Volga River. Uh, Catherine the Great brought a bunch of Germans with her. Well, for, uh, I don't know, in the 1700s, and they were German farmers. Wow. And they came over in 1912, and then my dad was born in 1923. Wow. And they only spoke German at home. That is so cool. So he'll ask him, because he Zoom calls his dad, he's in a nursing home, and he'll ask him, tell me something in German, teach me a German word. And yep. what's the German word he always teaches you? He always tells me the same word, and I can't even remember it now. <laughs> Isn't it like, um... And then you'll say, or something? Yeah, Dashkovich. And then what I'll, does that mean? And you'll say, Sprechen Sie Deutsch? And I'll say, Nein. And that's the end of our conversation on that subject. All I know is Sprechen Sie Deutsch means do you speak German, and Nein means no in German. So that is hilarious. I like that. He is so cute. He also would, if I was naughty, he would call me a little schnickel fritz when I was young. Oh, so. I know how to call somebody a dumb head in German. A Dubestein Dunkauf. That's so. I don't speak much German. That is really cool, though. Uh, you're gonna zero the scale, okay. and we're going to add. So we have our two ounces banana. Uh, you're going to do one ounce of oats, mm -hmm. and I'm going to do one ounce of wheat bran. So we're gonna make ours just a little bit different from each other, which is kind of fun. And we'll see which one. They're both gonna turn out delish, but which one we like better? This will be fun. So one ounce. So on my dad's side, it's very German, very German. Uh, and then on my mom's side, it's Irish, and then a teensy weensy bit Jewish. So this is where the red hair comes from is my mom's side, and then the German part they is from my dad's of, side. They got a lot of Germans over there on your mom's side, too. Oh, really? Yes. Germans and Irish. It, it's kind of, it's, it's a mixture. We're a rescue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Deb. Uh, this Sunday is also our 41st wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. Deb, you are so cute. That is so fun. Congratulations. Let's see. I don't know why the comments aren't coming up on here anymore. Let's reopen it. Um, oh, okay. Lois, God bless him. Deb, my dad died in January at age 97. Oh. He is in heaven, so I am not sad. No. Praise God. That is That's so fun. Great. Yeah, we have a hope that we're going to see them again. Isn't that exciting? Our future is ahead of us. Yes. That is always exciting. They're never lost. They're never gone forever. They just went home before us, and they're waiting for us. That's right. So now we're going to do one egg, and we're going to play the game. Which one's two ounces? Or you could just do one egg, so you don't have to zero your scale. I'm not going to zero my scale. I'm just going to put one there egg in. Go. Live life on the edge. Yeah, one egg at a time. Whoa. I can take your eggshell. Throw that away. Do you have egg on your fingers if you want to wipe them oh, yeah, off? Thank you. I know you can't like cook when you got egg on your fingers. Uh, Deb said snickle fritz, lol. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I bet you didn't know you were going to learn German today. Uh, Amy, hey, Natalie and Pastor Tom, this is your friend Amy. Uh, Deb, I think I'm the Hi, same Amy. age as your parents. I'm 63. You are 63. Four, 64. 64. So you are. That is so. And random fact of the day, we share a birthday. Oh, my I best would, birthday present I ever. Was. That's why I'm the favorite child. I'm the favorite child. 
We won't tell anybody though. We don't want them to feel bad. Now we're going to add our spices. So this is where we're going to get really gingerbready with our spices. We're going to do some ginger. We're going to do one, tis one teaspoon of ginger. Uh, let me get my teaspoon here. Yeah, lots of ginger. If you use fresh ginger, you might want to like mince it really well. And I don't know if I would use a teaspoon. It's pretty potent. Bites. It bites. <laughs> Uh, Deb, wow, same birthday, how special. It has been. He's had a lot of Barbie birthdays. I really liked Barbie. That is so fun, though. Do some accessorizing. Yeah. Then we're going to do a pinch of salt, or about like an eighth teaspoon pinch of salt, kind of to taste. I like a little extra salt because it brings out the sweetness of the fruit. Then we're going to do a pinch of allspice. We Ooh. actually ran out of allspice. Wow. I had never used allspice until I started cooking. And then my dad's like, oh, if you're doing like apple pie something or pumpkin pie something, you got to do allspice. Or I'm grit like, sausage. Grit sausage. You put, this goes in meat? Oh, do you like put apples with the meat then? Grit sausage. Meat scraps, oatmeal, and allspice is called grit sausage, and that's a German meal. You, I've heard, okay, I've heard of some people putting cinnamon, oh. Uh, just a pinch of it. Some people putting cinnamon in their burgers. I don't know about that. That, huh. That's very interesting. You could make like a whole sausage meal with this. And, then, right. and then one more German uh, meal I had when I was a kid. It was uh, the uh, beef fat and flour cakes, and they would cut them up thin and fry them crisp. And they were called punnels. And oh. they were delicious. I think I think I'll stick with the How sugar much? and flour free. A pinch, or I really like cinnamon, so I did yeah, I did about that much. Okay. Uh Tammy, my birthday was June 16th, and my mom's is the 17th. Oh, oh how oh. fun! One day apart. Oh my goodness. Uh Amy, my dad's birthday is on this Sunday, and he's gonna be 63 years old. Oh my man. goodness, how 63 fun. 63 young. Yeah, that is not old, man. Uh, Tandalin, hi, Natalie's dad. If you didn't know, this is Tom All. He is my dad, Tom. Or you could just say you. He'll answer hey, to that. You. Hey, you. Uh, now we're going to do some almond extract. Oh, yes. Now, this is um, almond flavor. It's non-alcoholic. I got it at my local health food store. I don't think I would get it again. It's not as flavorful as an extract is. It has, like, glycerin in it. So it's a little bit thicker, so you might want to do like more than a pinch. I just kind of like see how much I drizzle. So it's just a little bit thick, and it's not as flavorful as an extract. I didn't see what you were doing, so tell me. I'll tell you when. Keep going. Oh, it runs slow. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so it's like thick. Keep going. It just yeah, we'll use it up. Yeah, come on. I don't think I would ever get this kind again. That's not my favorite. Shake it a little. Anticipation. Never heard that song. <laughs> Car Carly Simon. Oh. Married to James Taylor. Uh, Maureen, can I use maple extract? Yes, you can. I actually grabbed some. Is she from Vermont? Vermont? Is she Maureen from Vermont? Uh, no, Maureen oh. is from Massachusetts oh, or Michigan. Okay. No, Massachusetts. I get those two mixed up. Uh, Loretta, my dad is called Tom. Well, oh. he's your new dad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now we're going to do a fourth teaspoon of each of these, of baking soda and baking powder. Baking powder, you'll like this, baking powder science. Baking powder gives it lift, but alone can have like, yeah, a metallic-y or a metal taste. And then baking soda browns it, but alone it'll be flat. How much? One, one of those, a fourth teaspoon. So put them together, you get lift with a little bit of toasty brownness. Ooh. Isn't that fun? Science. The more you know. Somebody else told me that, uh, so I think baking powder, if I'm getting this right, or it might be the other way around, baking powder reacts to liquid. And baking soda reacts to the heat. Hmm. 
Yeah, isn't I just that cool? That. All right, so we have our spices. Excuse me. We have our spices, our egg, and our banana. Now we're gonna mix this up with our oats. Mixy mix. But yes, you could use maple extract. That would be just as delish. I was actually gonna do that. Uh, Natalie, what are you making today? Oh, Marine, it's Massachusetts. Okay, one day I'm gonna get this straight for Massachusetts. So fun. Uh, Cindy, mine too. Yes, Cindy's dad is named Tom, and he kind of looks uh, like my dad, just a little bit. Now, I substitute teach, and so, uh, you know, back in my day, names were like Larry and Bob Curly and, and, Mo. and uh, Brad and Tom, and now, oh my. Wolfgang. Oh, uh, I wish. Yeah, at least that's pronounceable. Colored pencil number two. Apple, you never know the kids nowadays. I've had so many kids and I'm like, what's your name? The kid didn't even know how to say his own name. Uh, Linda, now I've met all the alls. You have, she said, hello, Tom. Linda. She met John? Uh, I don't think I've ever had John on here. He's next. He's next, he's not in the room. Brother's Day. John, <gasps> Brother's Day, that's every day, right? I need something heavy carried. Guess what, it's Brother's Day. Carry this, John. That is funny. Perfect. All right, so now let me grab another. I have a spoon spatula. Wow. And I have my cute little spatula that was gifted to me. Oh, our Reuben dips are done. So what you're going to do is let's lightly oil this first, and then we'll take that out. It turns off. So watch out. It can be a little hot, but I just don't want it to tip backwards. So just sit, sit. Oh, it'll sit. Just a little spritz on each one. So then you can use this and like scoop it into each one. Try not to get it on that center thing. But if you do, that's okay. It's just the more you get on the center thing, the less empty your donut holes will be. Oh, he's going to pour it. He what? likes to move oh, on the edge. Oh, I see. You can pour it no. on the hay if you want to. Oops, I already spilled. That's and okay. I, and I got it on the middle. That's okay. It's going to get on the middle. But... They're kind of hard it's, it's to like do. It's like right there in the middle. It is. <laughs> it's right there in the middle. It's okay. It's kind of hard. Now I'm going to pour mine into the waffle maker. I'm going to start, I think it'll do two waffles. Or this would probably fit into one big Belgian waffle maker. Ooh. Yeah. Belgium. Anybody watching from Belgium? I do have one or two people I know of that are from Germany, but I don't know if it's Belgium, Germany. I ran out of room. That's okay. What I can do is I have a little bit more room in my waffle maker. Oh, I'll pour the extra in this last waffle hole, and then it'll all cook together. I, You were the first one. I made these, the cinnamon donuts from my volume eight, and those reminded me of... Uh, gingerbread because they were mm. quite like strong and a little bit they had that little bit of bite so I'm like ooh, I gotta make my dad these so I did and he really liked them I think he ate all of them I'm like here try one he's like oh those are good <laughs> you can't just eat one uh Linda true get John in here I will I'm gonna one of these days I'll have to make something really meat he likes tacos meat typical like guy he likes the food which is good but he also, he likes the sweet stuff, too. We've made him uh, the mango bake. We've made him some other, like, breakfast things. And he really likes those, too. So he's fun. Uh, Tammy, it was my daughter's last day of school today, and she was crying because we're moving, and she's going to miss her teacher. Oh, Aww. that is so hard. That is hard. Yeah, he, you taught at the Christian school for, like, what, 20-some 20 20, years? 23 years. 23 years he worked at one school, and then... For there was some reasons, and they closed the school, so now he's substitute teaching. But was it hard missing all your students? It was. Seeing them throughout all the years grow up and leave. All right, our Reuben dips are done. So we're going to take these out, and we're going to try not to burn ourselves. Don't burn yourself. That's one goal. Ooh, this is. Oh, yeah, you can tell it's done because the cheese is just starting to brown just a little bit. So that one's mine. 
This one's yours. Oh, the you cheese is bubbling. I know your caraway seeds and how I put it in there. I knew which one was which. Oh, they're beautiful. I probably wouldn't test it now. It is molten lava. And have, have you ever gotten like molten cheese like stuck to the roof of your mouth? Mm -hmm. oh, you got to do the hush, 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 hush. And then it's stuck there. And it peels off your Oh, I did that one time. I bit into something. Uh, it was not fun. I don't like that. Uh, Stanley. Oh, Stan said, good to see you, Tom. Oh, hey, good to see Stan. You, Stan. They are old friends. They lived here for a while, then they moved away, then they came back here, so it's so fun. Then they're moving back here again, which is always Stan exciting. Is, We're excited. Stan is so great. Yes, our friends. So fun having you here. Uh, Tammy, my mom taught me at a Christian school. That is so oh, fun. Indeed. Harvetta, hello. Loretta, haha, ha, your scales remind me of toilet seat lids. <laughs> They do. They really do. The, this is my favorite scale. It's the Escali Primo. It's nice and light. I was going to give him the pink one. He really wanted it, but I thought I'll give him the red one. They're really light, and then uh, they're super fast and accurate, which I like. So if you're, like, pouring liquids, it does it pretty fast. Where I noticed the OXO scale is just a little bit slow, even though the pull-out thing, that's really nice. But I have liked this one. This one's my favorite right now. Uh, then, so you're going to top these donuts and waffles with things. So what I topped mine with, and it was really delicious, was I did a mixture of um, the apple jam, and then I put some, like, cinnamon in it, some, I think, maple extract, excuse me, and I cooked it in a crock pot, but you can cook it on the stove, super fast, super easy. And then, um, so I have some, I froze it, so I'm having it thaw right now. Oh, no, what happened to Instagram? Come back, Instagram. There we go. Oh, it timed out. That was weird. Uh, so I have some that I froze. I just put them in glass pickle jars that were empty. Now, don't fill it all the way to the top. I found out the hard way. It expands a little bit, so it did spill just a little bit, but not too bad. And I have that thawing, or you could do just diced apples on top. That is just as delicious. And then we're going to top ours with yogurt and peanut butter. You can mix that if you want. <laughs> yes as like a peanut butter fluff on top, or you can do them separately. They taste different both ways, which is really interesting how just mixing two things or having them separate tastes completely different. So we're going to drizzle those on top once that's done, but I think this is cold enough. Do you want to try it out? Of course. I ran out of forks. Oh. Let me, I'm going to squeeze around and grab a fork. He's not on strictly three meals a day, uh, X, Y, Z, so he can taste test this. Oh, it, the Instagram ran out of power. That's okay. At least we're still on Facebook, so those of you on Instagram, hop over to Facebook. Sorry. All right. Oh, we're just going to watch him taste hey. test this because it's already after lunch. I already had my lunch, so you could have this for dinner and then have 14 ounces of vegetables on the side. Don't That'd you be a lot. Some stories or something to tell, or some recipes. Well, you to have tell to tell us how it tastes. Don't burn yourself. That wouldn't be fun. Yeah. We know something happened. Yeah, the Instagram ran out of power, so I'm sorry, people on Instagram. You can find the replay. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. He likes it. Delicious. So good. You can't go wrong with like pickles and cheese and that just that sauce mixture. Do you get all the flavors, the caraway seeds and I'm all that? I, I'm glad I put in extra, extra caraway. I really like caraway. Yeah, it and really sauerkraut. adds that. Yeah, sauerkraut is so good. I've heard people they'll just add some sauerkraut to their salads. That would be pretty good too, because it's just a little bit. It's kind of like that pickly zing. I really like sauerkraut, too. I used to not like it at all. Uh, way to go, Pastor Tom. <laughs> wow. Isn't that good? Isn't that easy. Yeah. And how easy was that? You can put that together in five minutes, stick it in there while you're making your other mm. stuff. So what I would do for lunch is I would dip vegetables in this. Or, like I said, you could put it on a salad. You could have just like a coleslaw mix, which is shredded cabbage. Put it on top. It would be like a Reuben bowl. All right, and our donuts should almost be done really? here. 
This is just too good to be true. I know, it's so fast and so fun. You can tell like with the waffle maker it's done because the steam will stop coming out of the sides, but to make sure your waffles like don't stick, let it cook a little bit longer. Oh, this, this might take a little because bit. Because I don't fold my clothes and I just got my back of my shirt steamed. <laughs> All the wrinkles are out. <laughs> okay, it doesn't steam that much. Uh, Loretta, I just joined the eight week Brightline Eating Boot Camp. I just discovered it and I'm pretty nervous. But your recipes and web page are amazing and make it so much more doable. Thank you, Natalie and Dad. You're truly, you're totally amazing. Oh my goodness, Loretta, you are so sweet. You I'm are. so excited for your new journey to food freedom to begin. That is like so exciting. I remember the first day we started, and the guys remember that too, because that's the day they ran and hid for about three <laughs> weeks. How was that going through three oh, girls going through detox? I'm so happy for you, all three of you. He's been so supportive. Yep. I have not missed ice cream because of nice cream. Yes, there's so many things. You don't miss Rubens. You don't miss donuts. I have a picture of the last donut we ever had. We were up at the North Shore. Some friends came and we were like, let's get the world's best donut. And I remember eating it and I'm like, meh, it's a donut. I kind of want them all now because it was just so sugary. World's best donut. World's best, best donut. Fight. Uh, Deb, so is the dip a full protein? Let me Ooh, technical talk now. double check. All right, so the dip is, uh, yes, your full protein and your full fat because the Reuben sauce has mayo in it. So it is your full fat also. So for lunch, you would side it with six ounces fruit and six ounces vegetable. You could have it for dinner also and then just side it with 14 ounces of vegetables, which that is so doable and so yummy. And then these donuts, you would side with a half a protein and four more ounces fruit. So what I'm going to do is two ounces Greek yogurt, a half ounce of peanut butter, and then four ounces of this crock pot apple jam or the apple jam or just diced apples or your favorite fruit. That I'm would gonna, be delicious. I'm going to try top. one of these plain. Yes. Or how many do I get? <clears throat> uh, Natalie's cookbooks have helped me so much. Uh, you've lost. Tammy said she's lost 78 pounds. Oh, Tammy! Man. Oh, that is just, that is so fabulous. And what an honor that my cookbooks have helped you. I mean, that is just the icing on the cake, it, or the, the yogurt on the mug cake. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the peanut butter drizzle on top. Mm. That is so fabulous, Tammy. Oh, so excited for you. That is, so oh, that is a lot of weight, 78 pounds. All right, let's check our waffles. Oh, my bracelet just popped off. That's okay. We're going to check our waffles. <gasps> Open slowly. Ah, they're good. All right, and I think your donuts should be done too. Let's check them. They are. You can do the poke test, and they're a little bit stiff, so you know that they're done. I'm going to get two plates. My favorite part. Or let's just put it all in the oh, same sure. plate here. Because we got these ginormous plates. Oh, well, we better do two plates. I gotta grab my waffles. So what I like to do is I'll just take a fork and I just like lightly lift them up and they come right off. I'm gonna turn this so people can see your donuts. And we don't need the scale. Oh, we will need the scale for our toppings. So you can take your fork and just, they lift out pretty nicely. Look at that. They lift right out. So I'll let you get your donuts. I'll get these waffles. Oh, these waffles look so good. Ah, they came right out. And then this is your little waffle nugget because you didn't have enough room. Look this at his cute really little cool. waffle nugget. Isn't it fun? Little donut maker. And then I made mine with wheat bran. So mine are like bran waffles, which is, is kind right of fun. if I try one of these just without Yes, problem? yeah. Hey. It's your donuts. You you get to eat all of that oh and all that dip. Oh my. So here's my waffles. It made two waffles in my big waffle maker. And they're nice and thick. How is it? Just like a gingerbread man. Just like a gingerbread man. Yay. Who needs gingerbread man with all the mm. like sugar and all that stuff? So you don't have to top yours if you don't want to. You could have them. See, what's kind of nice 
is even if you have family that's not eating this way with you, they will naturally kind of just change their diet also a little bit. Like, oh, instead of dessert, they could have this kind of thing. If they're used to having that and they're not eating strictly three meals a day, like my brother, he's always been at a healthy weight. I always saw him like the epitome of healthy weight. So he would like eat this maybe for breakfast and then he'd have something else. Or he would have it like between, because he eats his meals, but he hasn't had a problem with weight, unlike me. Uh, and he, you've been at a pretty like decent. I've lost some weight through this. Yeah. On the edge of the camp. Right, just cutting out sugar and flour just some of the way has really helped him also. So that's really exciting too. Uh, Loretta, they look amazing. I'm salivating. Ah, that you know is what? so fun. I almost like this better because of that crispiness. Like oh. A, like a cookie. You like the waffle better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does cook it a little bit flatter and a little bit like this compared to his donuts. You could cook those like longer. And one side is a little bit more done than the other side. You can kind of see that. I'm gonna, my hands are clean, so I'm touching his donuts. That's so okay. one side's a little bit more done than the other side. I've noticed that with the um, donut makers. I have a muffin maker too, and a pancake maker. I really like makers. They're kind of fun. So yeah, I have noticed that. Maureen, I am drooling. This is so fun. It yeah, is. you don't even have to top them. I'm not gonna top mine yet, because I'm not gonna have these today because it's not breakfast time. I'm gonna have this tomorrow for breakfast. So I'm gonna refrigerate these and then I might heat them up and then top them with my toppings tomorrow morning. Then they won't get soggy because soggy waffles aren't as good. But it does, you could top it and refrigerate it. I've done that before. But then again, they do get a little soggy where everything kind of touches. So depending on how you like your waffles. I like mine a little bit crisp. And this will be easier to hang on the Christmas tree. <laughs> It will. Hey, it's your new jewelry if you were ever wear jewelry. All right, so let's show our, I think, oh yes, they're quite cool. They're a little bit warm. So we have our Reuben dip and our waffles. So why don't you hold your plate up and we'll show them our delicious meals. Oh, How fun was this? this was Father's great. Day special. Thank you for cooking with me, Dad. Well, thanks for having me on. This is so fun. Yes, I'm excited to eat this. This is going to be my lunch and it breakfast. Special. All done. How easy was that? And they say cooking sugar and flour free is hard. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. And it tastes great. It does. It really does. You also inspired the pumpkin pie recipes because he made a good pumpkin. Uh, so he used to make pumpkin pie. Then he's like, why well, make the crust? I'm just going to make like a pumpkin pudding. So we would have that a lot. And he would make apple crisp. He made the best, so that inspired my apple crisp recipes. That hey, I'm like, hey, I want apple crisp too. I could make that. Yeah, and we haven't missed a bit. Yeah, haven't missed a Not thing a at all. That's so that. fun. Linda, this has been so fun. So happy that you and your dad can both be here with us today, Natalie. Thank me too. You. Thanks for joining me, Dado. And it was so fun cooking his favorite things. So we got savory, and then we got sweet waffles, gingerbread, and Reuben-y. He likes all those flavors. That is so fun. Uh, Tammy, I made the apple waffles today. Yum, yum. Oh, those are good. Those are one of my favorites too, apple waffles. Anything waffles. I sometimes play the game. I'll have like leftover vegetables and I'll be like, will that waffle? Hubbard squash waffles very well. Sometimes it sticks, so you gotta cook it quite long, but it does waffle and it's really tasty. Huh. Yeah, Hubbard squash. Mix that with an egg and some seasonings. You can make it sweet or savory because it's kind of, because you can do like cinnamon on top of squash and that's really delicious. Or you can make it savory. I've made it like taco chipotle. Uh, oh, Amy, Natalie, who is speaking today at Bible study at 630? So we have Bible study 630 right in our back porch because it's nice out here in Minnesota. It's at 6.30 p.m. I'm actually going to be sharing. We are teaching a new series, and it has been really fun. It's the key to prayer. So it has really changed my prayer life and just my thoughts of what is prayer like about, how does prayer work. There's so many different kinds of prayer that I would have never known about. So you can join us tonight at 6.30 p.m. on the Love of God Family Facebook page, Love of God Family Church Facebook page. And it's just a really fun time. We start out with music, and we're in our back porch, and it's just a family, and it's a really fun time. Really 
inspirational and uplifting and oh man, it is life changing. Janice, thank you so much for sharing another Friday with us. Enjoy Father's Day, Tom. Thank you. Ah, Tammy said, and cauliflower skillet pizza for lunch. <gasps> oh, that's Ooh. one of my favorites, too. I like it better than uh, cooking it in the oven because it really gets it done in the skillet, those little cauliflower skillet pizzas. So good. Those are also my cookbooks. You can find this Reuben, hot Reuben dip recipe in my volume six cookbook or in cooking with joy two, which is, has all the recipes from volume six through 10 in one big book. It's in the lunch section. Uh, it was one, it was page 162 of cooking with joy or it's in volume six. You can find all of these cookbooks and more on my website, weight loss recipes, cookbook.com. And if you missed any part of this, you can find the replay on Facebook, Instagram, Instagram did cut out, but you can find the replay of both of these on my website. I'll be posting it soon. Uh, WeightLossRecipesCookbook.com. We have one more comment here. Oh, Loretta, this has been so lovely. Thank you. Uh, Loretta, I want to buy a book. Which one should I start with? This is a really good question. I get this a lot, and it's a really hard question because... It's like saying, pick your favorite child. I know they would pick me as their favorite child, but it's really hard to pick because I have favorites in every volume. You could start with any volume. I usually recommend starting with cooking or with uh, volume one, Simply Delicious or Cooking with Joy because they each have really great starting and foundational recipes to get you started. Um, otherwise, Cooking with Joy 2 is another great one. Cooking with Joy 1 contains volumes 1 through 5 in one big cookbook. So you get all the great recipes from volumes 1 through 5. Over 300 recipes in each of these. So really, you could start with any volume. You can find a recipe index and a food gallery on my website, weightlossrecipescookbook.com. And that might help you decide like what volume would taste best for you. Because everybody has different tastes. Like, oh, I like Reuben things. I have a couple Reuben recipes. You can find those in other volumes too. Um, Gail, both look wonderful. Thank you for sharing with us. Sarah, which one contains most of the recipes? Uh, all my cookbooks contain recipes. So volumes one through 10, they each have six over 60 recipes. Volume one has 59, but the rest of them have over 60 recipes, like 61, 62, and they're all separate recipes from each other. Then there's the Cooking with Joy 1 and 2. These each have over 320 recipes. Uh, Cooking with Joy 1 has volumes 1 through 5. Cooking with Joy 2 has volumes 6 through 10 in this book. Then there's the Holiday Volume. That would have all the holiday-inspired recipes. Then I have two whole food plant-based vegan volumes. So no oil, no dairy, no meat. Um, those... Those contain all the recipes from volumes one through 10 in those two volumes that are all the naturally whole food plant-based. Then there's Simply Delicious, that's 14 days of recipes. So you can find all of those on my website. Uh, sweetie, enjoy your Father's Day, Tom. Thank you. Uh, Judy, I made the banana cream pie for lunch. I also had a salad for a complete lunch. I ate it while watching this recording. <laughs> Yay! Oh, that is... Yeah. Oh, you're going to have to try the banana cream pie. That one's really good. It's really good. It should be on the cooking show every week. Right? Then you get to eat all the things. Maybe we'll have to make that next week. That's a fun one. Uh, that is in volume five, page 89. Thank you so much for stating that because usually I'm like, I don't remember which volume that's in, but I know it's in one of them. Uh, Gail, way to go, Tammy. That is so awesome. Sarah, thank you. Cooking with Joy is what I was looking for. Yes. These ones, I, I literally cook out of these a lot. I have them right in my drawer here, and I cook out of them. My family cooks out of them, too, because it's just got all the recipes in two big books. It's nice to have. So these, this, these were our recipes for today. I'll be posting the gingerbread donut recipe. I'll be posting that tomorrow morning, so look for that. You can also find replays and more on my website, weightlossrecipescookbook.com. This was so fun having everyone on here today. And I'm sorry, Instagram, it cut out, but that's okay. They can join in later. All right. Well, thank you so much. And remember, you are only one thought away. Let me get over here. You're only one thought away from a good day. You just change your thought. You change your day. Tammy, 
I like setting goals of losing a specific amount, and when I hit the goal, I buy a new cookbook. <gasps> Tammy, I idea. love that. That is fabulous, and what a great goal, because those goals, you getting those cookbooks, that's just like a gift to yourself that'll just keep on giving. You'll just keep losing weight as you do that. I love that. That is so, that is such a great idea. How fun, Tammy. Uh, Loretta, thanks, Natalie. Thanks, Tom. It was so fun. Thank you guys for joining me today during the live stream. There will not be a cooking show next week. Us girls are leaving on a little girl's trip, but follow along on Instagram and maybe TikTok. I'll have to see because we're going to kind of show you how to eat on the road, which will be really fun. Like, cause we, we're not bringing any food with us. The hotel has a beautiful giant breakfast and then we're just going to eat out because really a getaway. We don't want to like cook and have to think about that. So we're going to eat out and it's easier than you think to find healthy meals on the go. So follow me on Instagram and on TikTok. I'll be posting some things here and there and it'll be an adventure to see what we can find on our vacation. Uh, Sarah, yes, that's a big struggle for me. I understand when we first started, I thought, oh no, we can't find anything out to eat, but there's so many places. There's so many like hacks that you can do at restaurants that are just I would have never thought of that unless I, we kind of dove into this once or twice already. So it's it's an adventure. It's kind of like a treasure hunt. What delicious, healthy foods can we find on the road? So join us all week so that we won't be here next week, Friday, cooking. But we'll be here the week after that. All right, I'm going to let you guys go. And I will see you on Instagram through the week. Uh, Lois, thank you both. A happy and bright weekend for everyone. Yes, happy weekend. I love you guys. With joy, Natalie. And Tom. And my dad. <laughs> Bye.